I go to weddings and baby showers every damn weekend. When are you going to give me grandkids? Talk to your firstborn about grandchildren. I don't want him procreating. No. That's terrifying thought. Yeah, nobody wants nobody that. Nobody wants that. I don't have a man or any legit prospects. What have I ever done? Am I not suitable for life? You are very suitable for life. I'm so excited to talk to you about this movie because I know it's early, but it's my favorite film of the year right now. because It's yeah. so good. And I really hope everyone watches this because I think it's relatable on the sense that for anybody that's ever felt left behind uh, in life or feel like they're, you know, behind, I guess. And um, I especially love, obviously, for my own personal IVF journey, I love the portrayal and how authentic it is. Oh, yeah. What? What was what part of your process were you um, wanting to portray like the most? The loneliness. I felt like and I can't speak to IVF because I was single doing it alone, but it's still all you like I, mm-hmm. I, I think about how two people create a baby and then one person has to carry it. You don't both carry it, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, I got an IUD put in and then I'm bleeding and I get a yeast infection. There's all this drama. And I'm like, why do I have to be the one to deal with everything? So I feel like that was the, the, the depths of my loneliness. I experienced, I went there during freezing my eggs. I felt like I had really failed in a fundamental way as a woman that I had not been able to find a partner in time for my eggs to still be viable. It was like, Mm -hmm. well, you blew it. You failed. (laughs) And here's your punishment. You have to spend eight zillion trillion dollars and you need to torture yourself and potentially die by injecting air bubbles. Good luck. This is your punishment (laughs) for failing as a woman. So for me, I, I, I felt such deep loneliness and failure in those moments that I that I thought if I can't be the only one feeling this way, I'm going to just put it on, on, on screen and, and hope that somebody out there feels contained and affirmed by this experience that we're alone yeah. together. Right. Yes. Like, yeah. No, I absolutely. Cause you're right. Yeah. It's, it's a, it is a dream. You, you can't have a partner, but doing it, you are doing it on your own. Like the moment you did that first shot, I just, I felt it. I was like, Oh God, I know what that's like, but something else I love is how no matter what baby shower you're going to or what wedding you're going to in the movie, you are an awesome friend. Like you're so supportive. And I know that it's very hard sometimes for friends who are going through their own personal struggles to show that kind of support. So I was just curious, has that mentality like always been with you? Like, how do you get through that? Because I know it's not easy. It's such a lovely sentiment somebody brought that up to me recently that Nelly is such a good friend and I and I and I really like took that in because I don't even know that that was an intentional um you know characteristic but I think in many ways Nelly is me right so when they're saying that I'm like thank you for recognizing that I'm always I'm at every event I don't miss birthdays. I don't miss baby showers. I don't miss weddings. I don't miss bachelor. I definitely don't miss bachelor. <laughs> I don't miss any of it. I'm there for everything. And everybody knows it about me that I, I, I put a lot of time and effort and, and love and blood and sweat and tears into my friendships. And it can be hurtful at times when you feel like moments in your life like this, right? Where I feel that this is my baby, that scrambled is birthing my baby. I want my friends that I have shown up for the births of their babies and their baby showers. I want you to be here. I know that it might not be the exact same thing, but this is, I have been birthing this for longer than nine months. I'll tell you that I've been here yeah. this film. So it, in many ways, I feel like I, Nelly, I'm glad that you pointed that out, that it, it matters a lot to me to be there. I believe in milestones, right? Milestones yes. in the way that we grow. And I think sometimes sometimes as a filmmaker, it can feel like you've been living in Groundhog Day. And while everybody around you is falling in love, getting married, buying houses, having children, getting promotions, in some ways I've felt like I'm definitely being left behind. And, and I'm very proud of the fact that even though I feel like I've been doing the same thing forever, I'm starting to get bigger you know yeah. critics are getting bigger I feel like I'm expanding as an artist and as a person but um but yeah I think it's just hopefully embracing each other's life choices and, and life wins regardless of what they are whether it's 
a movie baby or a human baby or a job baby or a house baby. All of the millions of things that we as women fight for should be um, celebrated. Absolutely. And I think that just says something because I think true friends are there for you at your highest in in reality, honestly, because it's a lot harder if you're not there. So it speaks a lot about you. And I think that's an inspiring message to see too. Um, Another thing I really love, obviously this movie is hilarious. That's what I want people to know. This is so funny while also having that part. And that is not an easy feat to do. So I was wondering, what do you think is the key to like a quality comedy that's funny. Casting. <laughs> you cast the most brilliant actors that you can find because I can't take credit for some of the biggest laughs I really do think just came. June Diane slapped me. That was not in the script. We didn't, I didn't know that was coming. And it's one of my favorite moments in my film. Um, so many of the moments with between Jesse and Nelly, um, Santino and I, we just found in the moment. One of my favorite lines is when I when I call it, he says, you're a good egg. And I say, you're a rich egg. And then he <laughs> says, Fabergé egg. That was not in the script. I love it so much. You know, I think it's just, I mean, obviously from a script standpoint as a writer, I find a lot of humor in the, the paradox of life. Those moments where you're crying and then suddenly something awkward happens or you're laughing and then something painful happens and how being human is messy and it's all over the place and how you want to go and have this epic monologue, you know, this, you're going to tell somebody off, but then it results in you crying and breaking down and, and sort of, you know, revealing the true mess that, that is behind the curtain. So a messiness of life and then finding the best actors that you can get your hands on. Right, right. And um, I know you touched on your favorite line, but one of my favorite lines, which I hope to tell my son one day, and I'm going to try not to cry. Uh, you're one of the most intentional things I've ever done. Um, oh, you're going to make me cry, Susan. Sorry. What line meant the most to you? Oh, shit. You got it. <laughs> not my plan. Not my plan. I mean, that that monologue that I, you know, that letter, it was like truly my, the letter to my eggs. You know, I thought I'm going to write the like honest to God letter to my eggs. And that's a big one because I feel them like freezing my eggs. Like, I mean, the fight that I went through, you know, the the way that I single handedly achieved this thing against what felt like, I mean, I don't. It's like you're a chemistry teacher all of a sudden. You're mixing meds. Like I studied acting. Like I'm not qualified to do this. So the pride that I felt in being able to get to that finish line and to be able to tell my eggs exactly that line, you're one of the most intentional things that I've ever done. It it's it's definitely encapsulates not just the process of freezing my eggs, but making this film. I feel like I'm running out of time. Are you seeing anyone now? I'm seeing everyone now. It's sort of an all-you-can-eat buffet. How old are you? Please say 32 or 33. Nelly? I'm 34. Stupid. Let's make a run for it! I want you to remember. They can be a never-never land. Never growing up, never aging. But those eggs, they are. If I don't spend 13K to freeze my eggs, I might never be able to have kids. Meanwhile, you're gonna wait till you're 70 to have a baby with an influencer. That is accurate, and I'm not embarrassed about it. What's new with you, Nelly? I'm thinking about getting my eggs frozen. That's amazing. Maybe I should have a baby shower. But you're not having a baby. What if I screw this up? I don't even know if I want kids. I've seen Euphoria. You're not going to screw this up. You're buying time. Someone who's good enough for you is hard to come by. I'm either going through a renaissance or amidst the worst crisis of my lifetime. Here we go. Down here, you look like I'd say... Virgin? (laughs) Definitely not. Okay. 